And we are back with another one. <laughs> Why you look so confused? <laughs> Every time we start these shows, you come in like, what's happening here? How did I how did I end it up on this show again? <laughs> we are back. And if you guys don't know, make sure you guys do check out Next Level's face. <laughs> it's frozen. <laughs> it's frozen in time. <laughs> um before we begin, make sure you guys do check the description below for that VPN deal. We got a really good deal. Um, always got to protect yourself before you wreck yourself. I know you guys miss me saying that. Um, yeah, you just got to get that protection. You know, you don't want babies all over the place. So get that protection. Wrap it up. <laughs> Go. And while you're in the description below, you want to make sure you check out Buzz TV, buzztvglobal.com. They have some spe special edition boxes. Uh, purple. Purple, this one's purple. You know my favorite color is purple right now. So make sure you check out buzztvglobal.com. See, I, I saved Buzz TV for you this time because I because I knew you had that device in your hand the whole time. Did you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Um, so today's episode has been brought to you by the letter W, as in what the hell? <laughs> Um, get your daily daily dose of BS here with the BS show. Make sure you guys are subscribed and leave us a comment throughout the show. If there's something that we say or something that you want to interact with us, <clears throat> we do read the comments. So, yeah, let us know. Um, so if you guys missed it last month, we did a grind my gears episode. Actually, we did a part one and a part two. Um, just a lot of <laughs> part three. Part one was me. Part two was you. <laughs> I don't know about that. I, I never I never get triggered. Oh, sure. Actually, the whole thing was because you're you started to rant and I'm just like, why don't we just do a part two? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. So I. Um, so <clears throat> something happened that that it was like, a what the hell? I thought it was hilarious. I don't know if I told I don't think I told you about this yet, but um yeah so i ended up getting blocked <laughs> i ended up getting blocked um my so i've had se i had several people reach out and say hey um you know hope you're doing okay hope everything's good and and so sorry to hear what's been going on and i'm like i'm good i'm like i've been good i'm like this is just I'm like, I just haven't talked about this stuff yet because I really don't bring people into like my personal life. I really don't like to, you know, when I'm doing my travel stuff, when I'm doing my my or like whatever I'm doing, I really don't bring in my personal stuff with it. I just kind of give you where I'm at at the moment. Um, and, you know, some people kind of know like my situations of, of what's been going on. Sometimes I do share about certain things because sometimes it's like a little overwhelming um and i was like i was like you know what like i just wanted to rant about that i'm just like you know what i think i'm ready to actually like talk about it um so i did have my ex block me and i was like sweet i'm like maybe maybe i won't see these messages or or some of my family members liking your shit you know that'll be cool um and then there was something that we talked about. If you remember, you said the people that were supposed to watch it, they, they don't follow your shit anyways. Exactly. <laughs> so how did they, how did, how did, how did that, how did that, that wave go? How did that, that, that <laughs> how did that wave go? Um, so, This is what I noticed. The interactions that I had with certain people went from this much to non-existent all of a sudden. After? Yeah. Well, I mean, that's for the better, no? And I'm just like, I'm like, wait a minute. Why? All of a sudden, I'm like, did they actually watch it? I'm like, I wonder if they watched it. And then that's when I noticed. I'm like, oh, it's because she has me blocked. And now I don't see their shit. 
Interesting. Well, obviously. So I opened up my TikTok. TikTok. And, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm where the cool kids are at now. And I'm uploading a video. And um, literally, I see I see some videos popping up over and 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 over. And, over and I'm like, I am done. <laughs> I am done. You know, you know, and I don't know if he's going to watch this video or not. I don't give a shit if he does. But I saw a video and it said, it said, hey, everyone. I don't know if you guys are watching my videos because I think TikTok is shadow banning me. But if you guys could do me a favor, make sure you guys do comment and like and unfollow and follow back because i'm being shadow banned and i have x amount of subscribers and i'm not getting the views that i normally should be getting um so if you guys could make sure you guys like you know like and comment and all this stuff and i'm just like is he crying because no one's watching his shit i'm like wait a minute really okay i'm i get it sometimes you post something that's really really good and you want people to watch it. And sometimes you don't get those watches. And then I'm just like, wait a minute. Why am I backing him up on a 15 second video of him lip syncing to some other comedian that he thinks he's funny, but he's really not funny. And he, it, it looks like he's actually chewing food instead of lip syncing. I'm like, I don't know. Why, why do I feel bad for this? I'm like, this is stupid. So the very next video that pops out, is him lip syncing a comedian that has like, I don't know, two, three million followers on TikTok. And he did a video that he was ranting with himself. So what he does is he, he, he plays himself as the adult and as a kid. I got to send you one of his things. You'll probably start cracking up. Um, but it's pretty funny how he does that, how he, he like talks to himself and he jokes about certain things and the little kids always like very like just dumb about stuff you know what i mean um so yeah i i saw this video of him saying like yeah i have I have 2 million followers and only 20,000 people watch my video and then the kids like yeah that's pretty cool and the dads are like, no, we have 2 million followers. We should be getting more, more views. And the kids are like, yeah, fuck TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's like, it's just hilarious. Dude, my cousin lip synced that entire thing. And he, it must have been like something stupid, like five views or 10 views. Like he's trying to catch on a, on a trend that that guy did a year ago. And he had like, a grip ton of views on it because people are just cracking up about it, you know? And I'm just like, you know what? You've never liked one of my videos on this platform. We're done. So I, I actually started to unfollow people. <laughs> I'm like, Sounds sorry, like being salty. Sorry, I'm done. Sorry. Well, the thing is, like, it's like, why are you even here? It's like, if you're not even going to like one video of mine. And I know with with YouTube, we get that. Like, we'll have like, you know, 100,000 followers and we'll have like a thousand views on a video. I get that. Sometimes these videos are not meant for everyone. And, and these tutorials, reviews, whatever, it's not going to be meant for every single subscriber that is out there. And big shout out to like Flick Chick, Tim Windsor, Jeremy, uh, Cyclone. Um, shit, I know I'm missing like There's a lot of them. People. There's a lot of people. Um, oh man, and, and see, I could probably go to like my like my comments and just tell and just like 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 okay, Miss uh, Kayak. I'm looking at my travel stuff. Ooh, what is this? Uh, Craig. Craig, yeah. Craig, like as soon as we drop a video, Craig's like, hey, what's up? <laughs> yeah. Oh, Mike, he did, Mike a comment on our, he did a comment on one of our Twitter videos and made me laugh. He said big, I think he said big trouble in little Apple or something like that. Like, a yeah, playhouse, <laughs> but that's funny. Yeah. That's hilarious. Um, dude, it's like, it's like we have certain people that will always comment no matter what. 
um yeah no matter what like like they're constantly commenting and i and you know what like on my on on my other platforms i i do comment right back um and it's like it's like you know we have people that will always watch our stuff no matter what you know they like the entertainment they like to see what we're doing they like to see what we're reviewing or talking about or whatever um but then there's certain family members that is like i don't require you to watch all my shit but like you know we've seen my mom pop in yeah my mom is has is clueless about tech but she'll just pop in just because she's like oh my son's on here then let me support preppy we'll see preppy pop in you know um but like we, we we we've seen my stepdad pop in <laughs> you know my sister my a few of my cousins like we've seen certain family members where that will pop in every now and then and that'll just watch and and after that one gear that that grind my gears i had a lot of like friends that never commented shoot me a private message and say hey i'm thinking of you hope everything's cool hope you're okay um i saw that video and they'll reference it you know and it's just like oh cool you know like some of these people probably do watch it and they might like it and i just don't know about it and then there's some people that i know for sure don't watch shit because <laughs> you know what i mean but that's okay so i ended up unfriending unfollowing blocking whatever you want to call it to certain people that i'm just like yeah i think i'm 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 done just because Remember, remember how I was telling you I would open up social media and I would see like a picture of my ex and it was just like, oh, your 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 cousin liked this message and hearted or commented or whatever. And I'm just like, why am I seeing this on my feed? Oh, because it's a family member of mine that's saying hello. <laughs> it's like, hello, is it me? <laughs> So yeah, I'm done. I'm 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 done. Done. Um, last week when I was in Big Bear, I was just looking at like going through social and just posting stuff, and I saw some of some pictures and videos or whatever of of some family members, um, and I'm just like, do I really care to see what the hell they're posting? Like, like this is kind of stupid. Like like. Would it annoy you? And 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 here's a question for you, or a question for anybody out there. Would it annoy you, or maybe not annoy you, but do you think it's kind of dumb? Oh, remember back in the day how Facebook used to be like, I'm here sitting in front of the porch. You used to yeah. put like a little status thing. I think so. Remember that it was like it was like the stupidest thing. I'm sitting in my backyard, or I'm I'm sitting in my living room, and it's just just like. Who cares? It's like, dude, you, you really think people care if you're on the crapper? Who cares? Would you be annoyed or would you be kind of like interested or would you or how would your reactions be, I guess? If somebody's posting year after year after year after year, starting from sometime. Actually, this is like a year round type of thing. I'm watching this movie and it's like it's like a literal screen capture of a poster and it shows the movie or oh it's that time of year again time to watch this one again and it's just like dude you watch that same exact movie every freaking year they do them i don't care would you follow that would you or would, would you like be interested in in that like like oh i want to see i want to see what they're posting about <laughs> I don't really know. I don't really follow too many people. I like, I really don't like most of the things that I follow are really specific towards my interests, like stocks or crypto or something like that. Right. And like a lot of that stuff too is like maybe still irrelevant. I just keep scrolling. Yeah. I, uh, I, I kind of was like, but at the same time, like you got to do you to protect your mental health. You know what I mean? Like if something's triggering you, 
then you either go full Karen or you just figure it out. <laughs> well, that's why I just said I'm just going to unfollow this thing because right. it's kind of like the same thing every year. It's like, oh, here comes Halloween. Let's do one Halloween movie every day for the for the 31 days of October. And then, oh, here's Thanksgiving. Let's watch Thanksgiving type movies for the entire month of November. Oh, here's Christmas. Let's watch a Christmas movie every day for the month of December. Oh, here's January. Let's watch a New Year's movie for every month of every day of January. Here's That's Valentine's cool. Day. Every like, dude, it, every fucking month, every day, <laughs> it's a freaking movie. And it's like, dude, do you really think and it would be like no likes, no comment, not even from his own. Maybe they want to be a movie reviewer. No, that's the but that's the thing. They don't. Okay. Well, maybe they want to talk about it. But they don't. They just say, oh, t- oh. Time to drink some water, and then they'll show a picture of a water bottle. <laughs> it's like, oh man! Like for me, I'm just it thinking makes like them happy to share their life with you. I'm like, I'm like, how old are we again? Are we still? How many times do you need to watch Die Hard during Christmas time? As many times as you can. Hey, if Die Hard is a Christmas movie. Then Adam's Family Number Two is a Thanksgiving movie. Isn't one of those uh, those Batman movies a Christmas movie too? The one with Penguin, isn't that a Christmas movie? Or the one with Mister Freeze? <laughs> Why? Because there's snow. <laughs> I think so. That's a Christmas movie. Oh man, <laughs> my other cousin. Actually, I'll, I'll call him out. He's cool. Um, I just watched. Um, posted saying this is not. A Thanksgiving movie. There, I said it. And it was um, the Adams Family Values. I think that's number two. And it's the one where they have the Chippewas and they send their kids off to some camp and they're reenacting something for Thanksgiving. And I'm like, BS, it's a Thanksgiving movie. They're, they're, you, you got to protect the, the Native Americans. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> well. <laughs> I was just cracking. I, I like, okay, I'm like, okay, that's funny. That's, but see that it, him, he's, he's different when he posts stuff like that. He, he actually does the reviews. He actually talks about it. Like I could post something and then he'll reply back and say, no, you're wrong or good point. He'll, he'll either, he'll either agree or disagree. And it's fine. And sometimes we'll go back and forth, we'll rant. But, on the other families, if I post anything saying like, oh yeah, dude, that's cool. Or, or no, I don't think that's right. Y- y- you know what I'll get? Crickets. <laughs> but they'll sure respond to everybody else. <laughs> and I'm like, really? You can't, you can't control that. Don't let it get yeah, you. I can. I could control if I respond or not, or if I'm going to look at your feet or not. So Goodbye. <laughs> you're so salty you're just so salty what is it like this but it's do, true do you it's man. true if i do send you. you a message and i say hey next level how are you doing and then i see you commenting on everybody else you see my message you don't say shit to me and i'm just like hey uh are, are you good are you what are you up to and you're still ignoring me like like i can tell you're ignoring me because you're responding to everybody else it's like, dude, at least flip me off or something that you recognize that I say something. Like any kind of interaction, I don't care what it is. But no, it's like it's it's literally like I'm throwing rocks at your forehead and you're just sitting there like it doesn't phase you, like nothing. Like I'm non-existent. Well, I mean, they're sending you a message. Yeah, exactly. Why waste why waste my time? And looking at your cheesy posts that nobody cares about. That's that that's salty right there. That's salty. But I don't give a shit. So yeah, goodbye. <laughs> you are the weakest link. Goodbye. I'm gonna I'm gonna pivot that somehow to a to an article. <laughs> I guess talking about being salty. We have uh can I block this? 
There we go. That's better. We have a Florida woman who's salty at Kraft who's suing them for $5 million. Who's this saying is- that the Velveeta microwave mac and cheese mm-hmm. takes longer to make than advertised. She's salty, bro. <laughs> or she forgot to put the salt. <laughs> Look at this picture that they put in the article. And see, I believe that shit that people do some stupid things like that. The label on the cup of Avel Vita's microwave mac and cheese says the meal only takes three and a half minutes to prepare. But the Florida woman says that this is false and she is suing the manufacturer for five million dollars. That's stupid. <laughs> Amanda Ramirez of Hiley, Florida of Florida has filed a proposed $5 million class action suit, which means if she wins, you get some of this bread too. Ooh. Right, right, right. right, right. (laughs) So let's all root for Amanda. (laughs) Yeah, everyone's going to get like five cents. (laughs) Alleging the food producers Velveeta shells and cheese takes longer than advertised to prepare. The attorneys filed the lawsuit in the U.S. District for the Southern, Southern District of Florida, On November the 18th, according to the complaint, the lawsuit claims that the packaging on the microwave single serve cups of mac and cheese says it'll be ready in three and a half minutes and is false and misleading. The product instructions says to microwave the cup for three. Oh, oh, you see, you see. There's a difference between microwaving for three and a half minutes and being from start to eating in three and a half minutes, right? Because what do they always say? Let that shit cool. You can't just microwave it for three and a half minutes and shove that shit down your throat. <laughs> <laughs> so the attorneys argue the number doesn't account for the other four steps required to prepare the pasta. Re- removing the lid. <laughs> wow. I'm sorry. I don't know why that made me laugh so much, but removing the lid and the sauce pouch. So it takes time to remove the sauce pouch, adding water. So it takes time to add water. Now that's kind of like a variable. Is the water close by? Do you have to go to a stream? Like how far is the water? (laughs) Your water could be more than three and a half minutes away. I don't know. Like where are you making it? You have to go pump it in your backyard. (laughs) What are we nomads? (laughs) <laughs> and then you have your microwaving time. Then you also have to stir. And that's also a variable. Like, how much do you stir? Right? Some people might like it clumpy. I don't know. Well, how do you like your mac and cheese? According to court documents, the additional steps mean it's impossible for the mac and cheese to be ready in just three and a half minutes, according to the complaint. Wow. I mean, I, I kind of get it. Like, they could say can be ready in three and a half minutes if all the preparation is done but then you still can't shove that shit down your throat like how do you how would you how, how do you word this I'm prepared in under four minutes that gives you 30 seconds to take the shit out open the lid put some water and then put it in the microwave you could do that in 30 seconds if you were prepared no? You know, it'd be funny if they demonstrated like in the, the unpacking and everything. Like, let me unpack it, throw the cheese, throw the water, everything in there. And that takes about 30 seconds. And we're going to microwave this for two yeah. and a half minutes and then or three minutes or whatever. <laughs> well, that also depends on people's microwaves, right? Because people microwaves have different wattage. Is it yeah. three and a half you got a microwave for? Is it four and a half? Is it one and a half? Like, what's your nuke at? Yeah, what level are you? (laughs) (laughs) Customers are paying more than they otherwise would because of the three and a half minutes claim. Now, this is true. People do pay more if something claims to be ready quicker. People will pay for for time, right? If this is going to save you time, people will spend more money on it. So that that's true. So I kind of like I'm not I'm not saying that this is a crazy claim. There's some validity here. So this is a quote from the horse's mouth. It says, it's like many customers who seek to stretch their money as far as possible 
when buying groceries. But because of time claim, she said, paid more for the product than she would have paid and would not have purchased it or paid less had she known the truth. So if she would have known that this would have taken four minutes instead of three and a half minutes, she would have just got the one that took 10 minutes and paid less. Would you, though? <laughs> I don't know, man. Because the one that takes 10 minutes to do, let's say 10 minutes, right? The one you got to do on your stove top, whatever. It feeds more than just one person. And I feel like those single cup servings, they're kind of like a tease. Like you microwave that shit, you eat it, and then you can eat like four or five of them in one sitting. Mm -hmm. They're just like snacks. So maybe it's more of a wake-up call to society. Like pasta is not that difficult to make. We got to stop being so damn lazy. Yeah. I mean, I'm pretty lazy too, but I'm just saying. You know what? I've actually had these before. Hold on. What's punitive damages? Punitive? I don't know. So it says, in addition to the 5 million damages, the plaintiff also seeks punitive damages. Let me, hold on. Search. Also known as exemplary damages, the amount of money awarded to the claimant in a civil litigation to punish the wrongdoer. Oh, and she's asking for money. She's like, I don't want to share. Like, I'll share oh. the five million with everybody, but I also want a bigger My cut. Because yeah. I'm only going to get like five cents. <laughs> right. So uh, from Kraft Heim Foods and asked the company to be ordered to cease its deceptive advertising as well as be made to engage in a correct advertising campaign according to the court documents. So she wants money. She wants to get everybody money, and she wants them to stop their stupid advertising. Is her name Karen? No, it was Amanda. Oh. <laughs> this is the stupidest one. This is like the stupidest lawsuit I've heard ever. Is it? Is it though? Like there's some validity here. I don't know, man. I've used I've used those microwavable mac and cheese when when i've been camping and stuff i actually remember last year i rented that rv and we took off um had bella with me and everything i actually bought several of those packets and dude those things were awesome man i i, I and i you know what i don't even think i migrated for three and a half minutes because it's too damn hot i want to say i did maybe like two minutes two and a half minutes maybe and it was it was it was still hot out. It was still plenty warm, you know, because they're little tiny. It's not like it needs too much. And dude, it like I'm not gonna tie myself. Like, okay, ready, set, go. Let's see if I did it in three and a half minutes. I could sue this people. Like, who the hell does that? It's like what the hell? It's like grab your shit, throw it in the thing, eat it, and shut the hell up. You probably saved yourself a lot more money than putting it on your pot. I don't know. But I mean, at the end of the day, are we really surprised? We're talking about a Florida woman here. Shots fired. <laughs> right? right? Florida yeah. men are out biting alligators and I don't know what else. And then the women are suing craft for robbing them of their time. Yeah. So, I mean, out of the two, the Florida woman sounds a little bit more intelligent. No? Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Oh, yeah, no. sure. <laughs> What do you want next? Elon. What's going on with Elon? <laughs> okay. All right. Fine. 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 Actually, so, no. Save that for later. Like, oh. uh, uh, do the Apple thing. I heard all kinds of bullshit about Apple and Disney and all kinds of crap. Oh, shit. I didn't even pull up that article. Hold on. So leave us a comment. Let us know about your mac and cheese. Okay. So there was a rumor. They brought the CEO, Bob Iger in, and he's usually he deals with a lot of acquisitions. And a lot of people were saying, well, he's coming in to work on the acquisition of selling Disney. Right. And a lot of people were like, who's, who can buy Disney? Like, who do you think? Can you name, can you even name three companies that could buy Disney? It'll be way too expensive. Like Disney is like one of the biggest 
like profitable companies in the world. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't like buying them out clean. I don't see anybody who could even afford it. They go broke. <laughs> they go broke trying to buy Disney. So the only company that people were talking about was Apple because Apple has or it is a $2 trillion company. And they were doing the evaluation of Disney somewhere around 300 to 500 billion, right? So they're saying Apple is the only company that could potentially buy out Disney. I don't, I don't know if I believe that. Like, I think about Apple with their phones and tablets and TVs and so their subscription. And when I compare that to Disney, Disney has a subscription that's doing more than Apple. They also own Hulu, ESPN. Like, when it comes to networks, ABC, Disney owns a grip ton. Like, Disney has pretty damn close to a monopoly when it comes to networks. Apple cannot compare Apple is not comparable to Disney. Now, when it comes to like like products, like what you're actually getting outside of streaming services, sure, Apple's got your cell phones, your watches, your headphones, your tablets, your TVs. I don't know if I'm missing anything. Um and the thing with with uh Disney, when it comes to products, dude, their merchandise of what Disney has blows Apple out of the water. So how how how, how is that even a two trillion versus a 300, 400 billion when when and I know Disney has a bigger overhead, way bigger overhead. They got to pay um their employees and 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 cost upkeeps for like their theme parks and yeah i don't i, I don't know i don't see that if, if i look at like are they talking about just disneyland like some of the parks or are they talking about the entire like if they're talking about everything i want to see what the net what the worth is for everything that disney owns all the networks, all the streaming stuff, all the 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 merch, the theme parks, the TV shows, like like I, I'm just thinking about everything that Disney has, and I don't see how Apple is worth more. I I don't know. I I I really don't see how Apple is worth two trillion, and Disney's only worth three four hundred billion and if that's true that's still a lot of money to give them to be like here's <laughs> here's what a fourth no an eighth an eighth of our of our company or products or our money to buy you guys it could be a really good investment because disney is worth a lot of money and there's a lot of potential so apple's done a really really good job of building products and services in the fields that they're currently in right and they've leveraged themselves am i frozen no and they've leveraged themselves into the streaming world right this is very interesting when i look at it because this is the first year that i think there's a big focus or not the first year but i think starting from now because it wasn't like this a few months ago. So starting from now, it's almost like Apple is really starting to focus on the TV side of things. They didn't really care about it before. Yes, they had their Apple TV products, but this is the first Apple TV product that I think really has made an impact in the streaming world. I think it's the best Apple TV product we've ever seen. And I think it's a really good value for the money. And that's something that you can't say about the average Apple thing. Value for the money? Nah. Nah, you can't say that, right? And I think people are starting to finally notice that the Apple TV Plus platform and service is a really, really good service. High quality, good stuff. It's getting more and more content. And they're, it feels like they're emphasizing... And they're finally moving into the TV production world. <laughs> now, that's 
a very big jump to say that they're starting to excel in that category and then them buying Disney. That's a big jump, right? But sometimes companies talk for years before they settle a deal. Sometimes they sell certain parts of their business because we got to remember Disney has a very big umbrella, right? There could be smaller acquisitions within that where they sell, I don't know, Pixar or something else. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Because it's kind of a monopoly what Disney has right now, having Lucas, Marvel, Disney, like all those other like Pixar, like everything. It's kind of a monopoly. Yeah. So I don't know. I, I, I could see maybe Disney not selling as a whole, but selling a couple of the studios so that Apple could start to create more originals. Yeah. And I'm not talking about Lucasfilms or Marvel or maybe even not even the, 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 the strictly solely owned Disney products. I'm talking about the other studios they have underneath them. A whole acquisition, I don't think we'll see that anytime soon. Like, I don't think we'll see that this year, next year. It might happen in four to five years. Who knows, right? Yeah, I don't know. I think Disney is just too, too profitable. So according to an article, it says that acquisitions are under this guy's, what's his name? Bob? Bob's DNA. Under Bob's leadership, Disney went on a nearly $100 billion shopping spree and bought animation giant Pixar in 2016. They bought the Marvel Studios in 2009. They bought Star Wars in 2012, or Lucasfilm. Uh, they bought Rupert Murdoch's 21st Century Fox in 2019, and they spent $100 billion on that. So you imagine if... I'm not saying sell all of those for you know three billion dollars but they could sell oh man i don't know they could sell fox there you go this is the chart of everything they own <laughs> right so they have a lot of things they could sell for profit like massive it's crazy it's like here's like all marvel marvel entertainment marvel studios here's the Fox Entertainment Group over here. Um, here's the Disney Studios, Disney Music Group, Disney Corporate, Disney Theater, some of the theme parks. Um, here's ABC, ABC Studios and everything that they own, the History Channel, A&E, like all that stuff. Um, ESPN Wing. <laughs> services utv and it's more than just some of this stuff hulu actually can i click on this i can thank you oh but i can't zoom dang it yeah this is like this is massive and then it, of course it talks about like some of them up like they like they own star wars muppets everything that like you were just saying all the princes the pirates the pixars the indiana jones and then all the stuff that they own from family guy american idol the simpsons american horror home alone avatar night at the museum <laughs> disney's biggest competitors are comcast nbc universal which owns universal studios illumination and dreamworks the national amusements owner of paramount pictures and viacom which is part of the Nickelodeon MTV and Warner Media, which houses Warner Brothers, HBO, CW, DC, and Cartoon Network. It's crazy. I I don't I don't know. I don't see I don't see Disney going through this. I did hear a rumor about it. Um but I, I don't know if I, I don't know if I, I don't know if Apple really ended up buying them. That would be interesting if that actually happened. We got to also understand that Disney is a very, very old company and some of the uh, people would like to retire with billions of dollars. 
Yeah. Right? So it says in, uh, in Bob's 2019 autobiography, it was called The Right of a Lifetime. The executive wrote chapters about his friendship with Steve Jobs. He and his wife, Willow Bay, were close friends with Steve and Lauren Powell Jobs, even spending holidays together, vacationing in Hawaii. He even writes about standing in front of Steve Jobs' grave when the tech visionary's wife uttered, I asked him if we could trust you. And Steve said, I love that guy. And then Bob responded, the feeling was mutual. So they had a very, very close uh, relationship. Yeah. Crazy. So I don't know. Who knows what's going to happen? So this article or this discussion uh, came out uh, November 20th, around that time. And then since then, now there's a bunch of articles basically saying um, it's false. It's like not, not, not the rumor. I think the rumors are true because I'm sure that there's been talks about it, but they're saying that it won't happen, which I don't believe that either. Like, I think that just because it's not happening today doesn't mean that it can't happen in the future. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't, I don't think it'll happen. You, you, okay. You know what I could see more realistic though? Is a partnership. What do you mean? So right they merged now, the two businesses, huh? Second, they merged the two businesses. Not merge. It's kind of like what what Marvel Studios is doing with Sony, uh, Spider Man. They have a partnership. They're two different studios, but they're working together to make uh, some good stuff. Where they share the rights to the same content. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. So and Apple would have to buy in to use the rights of their content. So where I'm going with this is every time I've ever been to Disney, the one thing I would do when I used to I, like I used to be a big Disney buff. I still like Disney, but not as much as I used to. Like back then, I just used to be like a Disney freak. Um, but, dude, I used to go to the theme parks. And the one thing I would always want that I could never have this right here a disney phone case they always had them for apple and never for any other brand every time i go to disney i see a grip ton of apple cases that have Mickey or Goofy or they'll have the ears sticking out or whatever it is. Like they, it, it's always been Apple products galore. And I would have like my sister, my cousins, like everybody be like, oh yeah, like look, look at my case or, or, or check these cases out. Or, or they had like these little, like, like those Apple cases have like a little like hole on the bottom. So they'd have like a little keychain that would just hang. And I was like, Ooh, like I had my cousin that had one that had like a, like a kingdom hearts uh, Keyblade. I was like, that's freaking dope, dude. I was like, that's pretty cool. And I'm over here with my Motorola, um, my Evo, my HTC Evo. <laughs> like, I, dude, I used to have like all these other phones and they never had a case for my phone ever. I, it would be the newest phone. Never. It would always be Apple products. So I could see a like, like, I don't know if, I don't know what you want to call it. Like, a, like it's not them merging companies and it's not one buying one over the other, but I think it's kind of like a, like a collaboration where, where Apple helps produce certain things now that they're in the freaking in the movies and TV shows and streaming industry. Now that they're starting to push that stuff, I could see, them saying disney saying like hey we want a disney tv we know you have your apple tv but we want a disney tv with how nvidia shield has their android os how fire stick has their and their their fire os you know what we want a disney os that looks like this and you have access to Disney Plus, to Hulu, ESPN, to all that stuff. Just like how Roku has all kinds of apps everywhere. We want all of this stuff, but we want like 
and 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 it might not even be called Disney. It, it might not even be called a Disney TV, but it might have something that Disney does own that people know. Like, oh yeah, look here is the. Um, oh, you're gonna laugh about this. The, here's the Dream Box, you know, or here's here's the I don't know, just some, some kind of magical term that they use that people will be like, dude, this is legit and have it powered by Apple because Apple's been, like you said, Apple's been doing some killer stuff with their TV shows. And if they could actually like say, Hey, let's work together to maximize our profits. Like you're doing good. We're doing good. What happens if we get together? Can we do something even better? Kind of like Sony and Marvel with Tom Holland, Spider-Man. And in that scenario or in that example, let's be realistic. It took like 15 years for Sony to actually learn how to play well together. <laughs> and I bet you anything, Disney threw a shit ton of money at them and said, hey, look, this is how it's going to work. Probably. Probably. I don't know. I, I think I think it'll be anybody that partners up with Disney and whatever Disney owns is good business because they're going to they're going to make a pro like Disney Disney knows how to turn profit like even during the pandemic and they had to shut down all the theme parks and everything like they still turned a profit so yeah i don't know i'm 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 interested interested to see what will happen out of this what will happen of this Speaking of other things that I'm interested in to see what will happen of this, we have Elon Musk. We've talked about him a lot. He seems to be on every episode, and he's just so involved with a lot of things that are going on that are big in the media. So you're going to get more Elon Musk if you like him or not. Um, so as you guys know, if you didn't know, he purchased uh, Twitter for $44 million. Billion dollars? Billion dollars? Billion dollars? I'm sorry. Billion? B -b 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 billion. And uh, he's made a lot of changes. There's been layoffs. Um, it's interesting. This morning I woke up. Well, I got to find it now because now. Um, I got to see what he said because he tweeted something and I immediately went to like try it out to see if, you know, if he was talking crap. Um, so he said. Where the hell is it now? Ah, uh, here. This was 10 hours ago. So it says Twitter core services latency reduced by 400 milliseconds should feel noticeably faster. So immediately I opened Twitter and I started navigating. And I'm like, yeah, feels faster. So it's kind of cool that like he posts little things like that and you notice the difference. Mm -hmm. Like I've never seen anything like that from Twitter before. You want to be able to access your social media faster like navigate within it faster, get your shit done faster or lose track of time faster, which however you do your shit. I don't know. Um, so Elon Musk uh, started his second month as a Twitter owner by picking a fight with one of the only firms on earth large enough to allow the world's richest person to position himself as the underdog. Yeah, well, I mean, yeah. Uh, so Elon Musk said on November the 28th, Apple has mostly stopped advertising on Twitter. Do they hate free speech in America? He also said on the same day, did you know Apple puts a secret 30% tax on everything you buy through their app store? He <laughs> also said on the 28th, Apple has also threatened to withhold Twitter from its app store, but won't tell us why. I mean, they're telling you to shut up. <laughs> they want to keep that 30%, no? Mm -hmm. And this is this is what we talked about on our last episode, right? Yep. Like, There's a lot of interesting things that are going on with Apple, and they're trying to cover it up. So a lot of this one plus one is equaling to two, but they will never admit to any of it, any of it, and they'll try to cover it up. So it says the sequence of events is pretty easy to follow. Musk tweeted it throughout. 
Uh, in his first tweets running Twitter, he did a few things that made advertisers nervous. He started selling account verification, leading to a corporation, um, leading to a corporation impersonation spree that's that spooked a bunch of brands. He slashed the teams responsible for moderating content on the platform, as well as most of the company's salespeople, in some cases, leaving longtime clients with nobody to call. And you know what? Like, Twitter has built a brand name for himself. Like, even if you're not dealing with Twitter itself, but you communicate with every brand you want to talk to through Twitter. That's just where mm-hmm. you go. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, he announced a mass amnesty for banned accounts, meaning the return of tens of thousands of controversial posters, many of whom, who, of whom made life on the platform miserable for other users more broadly he suggested a subscription centric feature for the previous ad centric platform this aligned a whole bunch of major advertisers with which decided to pull back from the platform in part out of caution and sense of brand safety but also because in the grand scheme of online advertising twitter just isn't very important i mean it can be it's about to be and if you don't see it, you're kind of short-sighted. Mm-hmm. Like it, it's either going to go down in a burning blaze of glory, or it turns into something that's truly long-lasting and glorious. So I and, am what here, like inglorious, <laughs> inglorious, because like I, I, I like I like taking risks. I do. So I will bet on the latter. I will bet that this will become something that's crazy interesting in the next two years. You know what I mean? Versus mm-hmm. it going out of business in two years. I don't see this going out of business. Nobody drops $44 billion to put a business out of its misery. <laughs> yeah. Especially the richest person in the world. He'll figure this shit out. Mm-hmm. So it says this alone is not quite um, enough to explain why Musk is talking floridly. Is that a word? I need Floridly? To floridly? I don't know. Very flowery in style. I thought it was a reference to Florida people, but I, oh, I guess not. About <laughs> a battle for the future of civilization and about making an alternative phone to protect free speech. However, Apple isn't just a large advertiser. It's also a company that has at least some the- theoretical control over most aspects of Twitter's business. It decides who gets access to the App Store through which Twitter users on iPhones and iPads have access to the social media platform app. It also takes a commission on the in-app purchases, meaning any future subscription business for Twitter will also take into account Apple's 30% cut. Social media platforms have rules about kinds of content users can publish. Apple has its own rules too, as well as rules about its rules. Wow. (laughs) <laughs> rules about <laughs> rules about rules about rules. Not the uh, rules. This is a very long article, but it sounds like it goes very, very in depth. And I think that this would be a very, very good read. So I will put this article in the description of this. I'm not going to read the whole thing because it goes on for like six more paragraphs. But basically, Elon Musk right now is fighting for two things. He's fighting for the freedom of a social media platform. And then he's also fighting for a whole or almost like a a revolution of a social media platform. And I I really want to challenge anybody who's listening. Elon Musk is the only person right now with a social media platform that's really doing innovation as far as I'm concerned, right? You have Facebook that had the potential to do innovation and they threw in all their chips into meta. That's all they did. Mm -hmm. So their actual social media platform kind of went by the wayside. You know what I mean? Who else did we have out there? We have, we have what Instagram, Instagram's not a real, like it is a social media platform, but it's kind of in a box. Like, where do you go from there? Some might argue that YouTube is a social media platform, but then again, I argue that it's in a box. 
Like people only really go to YouTube to watch videos. They're not scrolling through your community tab. They're not interacting like how they would on another social media platform for the majority of people out there. Now, there are some big diehard fans to some really big famous YouTubers, and I'm sure there is a lot more interaction. But at the same time, those content creators, I would argue, have more interaction on a social media aspect aside from video content on another platform like Twitter. Right? I would yeah. think. So he's trying to do a bunch of things when it comes to content creation. He's trying to do a bunch of things when it comes to cryptocurrency, he's trying to do a bunch of things when it comes to monetization, advertising, subscription services. He says that he wants it to be an everything app, somewhere that you can go and do everything that you want to do. And I think that's the vision that a lot of these social media platforms have lost along the way because they've gotten so big with so much money that they've had and accumulated along the way that they've bought other businesses and forgot where they've come from. I think that that rant came out of nowhere. It really <laughs> did. Like I wasn't planning on saying any of that. You're like, I don't rant. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, but it makes sense to me. So it's yeah. like, even if you hate Elon Musk, you should want him to be successful because he fights for innovation. You can hate him all you want, but without him doing what he's doing now, will we see innovation as quickly as we probably will be in the next two years from platforms like TikTok, Snapchat, Facebook, Instagram, like all those all those platforms? Will we see innovation as fast as we would have if he didn't buy Twitter? I don't think we would. Mm -hmm. So you can hate him all you want, but he's kind of that spark that, is put under other businesses in every single category that he enters. It's like, Hey, you've been stagnant. You do some shit or Elon Musk takes your money from you. Yeah. So there's that. Like there's other articles that have come out saying Apple is shameless and they're bullying and that the Spotify CEO and is joining Elon Musk and is slamming Apple stores policy. But like, this isn't the time this isn't the only time where this argument has been around. This argument from their 30% has been argued by smaller companies who didn't have enough money to really make a difference. Like, look at the, the, the countless episodes that we've made about Epic and Google and Apple and, and, and like all these companies that are taking their 30%. Mm -hmm. This argument has been around for at least two to three years. It's because up to two to three years ago, the companies who build an online platform and have things to purchase through their apps were happy with the millions of dollars that they were making until they realized that their millions could be billions if they weren't being charged 30%. Like, what are you being charged 30% for? Like, I think if, if an average company goes to Walmart to sell their product, that's different because there's logistics, there's housing, there's, there's, there's staff, right? Like there, there's, there's reasons why a company like Walmart would charge 30% mm -hmm. to run your product. So Walmart usually gives you two options. You... Well, they don't really give you two options. They, you bring down your price and you give them a cut because you, like I have family that's put products in Walmart and Walmart pretty much tells you what you're going to sell your product for. You don't tell Walmart. Walmart tells you your product is going to sell for this price. And these are the margins. If you accept it, you're OK. If you don't, but goodbye. We don't like they're not they're not dealing with you. Right. But they kind of have the power to do that because it's a physical place. If you are a digital platform, why is it 30%? I still don't understand that. And this argument has been going on for years. And they've never really publicly, at least to my knowledge, explained both sides, like Google or Apple. Why is it still charging 30%? I don't know. So the guy from Spotify, his name is Daniel Ek, uh, Ek. 
I think I, I pronounced it right. Uh, four years ago, we filed a complaint detailing Apple's anti-cooperate co co anti-competitive practices. Sorry, sometimes I can't speak, guys. Four years ago, we filed a complaint detailing Apple's anti-competitive practices. Same some context. Uh, so this was an article from 2019, four years ago. My thoughts on the platform neutrality and how we ensure a level playing field. So he wrote a whole article from Spotify saying how Apple could fix their issues and didn't go anywhere. So now that <laughs> Elon Musk is on the bandwagon, he's like, I support you. Like everyone's banding together. So his latest comments come on prominent voices in the tech world and are again speaking out against Apple's App Store practices following Elon Musk's recent comments. Like this is going to get so messy. Yeah, I think so. This is going to get so messy. Like this is crazy because honestly, man, there's so many people that like using the Apple Apple devices just for its simplicity. And they keep wanting to lock people down so much that they're going to force people to make uncomfortable decisions that they don't want to make. Like the simple acceptance of RCS messaging. Apple just doesn't want to do it. So we still have the green bubble and the red bubble bullshit that's going on. Right. But now I don't know if you heard about that, that like that situation. Mm -hmm. Did you hear? So, <laughs> so do you, you have fr <laughs> friends and family with apples that text you? Yeah. And you know how, like if you say something and they they react to it, you'll get a stupid text message that says, this person laughed at your image. You ever seen um, that? It'll say, it'll just say liked. Or liked heart. an image. Or I hearted even, an image. But I, I don't, here, let me check. But I, I don't, I don't think I get exactly what they're hearting or liking. Right. Right. So this is the difference between Apple's iMessage communicating with RCS. So Apple has made it so that they, they said they're never going to uh, go with RCS. So now Google on their new Pixel phones, you know what they did? Huh? They created an algorithm. So when they said this person liked this image, it translates it and attaches it to your conversation. Huh? So on the Pixel phones, they started doing it back to Apple. So now they allowed the people using Pixel phones to like an Apple comment picture or a message and then it sends the Apple person the message where it says this person likes your tweet. <laughs> <laughs> like if it was an Apple. Right. So they did it back to them. It's hilarious. It's such a subtle jab. But now it's like, oh, green bubbles, red bubbles, blue bubbles. Who gives a damn? Now we got companies that are throwing subtle jabs and the consumers are stuck in the middle. They're stuck in the middle of this battle that they don't want to be in. Bomb. You know, like, it's funny to us. Like, I think it's hilarious. But the average everyday person who's not a tech person is not going to understand what the hell is going on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, I, if they keep going the way they do, and Elon Musk threatens to create a phone, I think Apple should be scared. If Apple starts to remove apps that people use on their day-to-day -day life from the app store and people can't get access to it what do they do change their life because they're so far gone with brand loyalty yeah i mean there's there's an argument to be made that you know apple consumers are sheep sure it's just because they've done such a good job building an ecosystem and trapping people in it I'm also very surprised, like I said in one of our previous episodes, that Apple doesn't have their own version of a social media platform that's built into the cloud. Like, it doesn't make sense to me why Apple doesn't have that. Like, it would have been crazy if Apple bought Twitter instead of Elon and then made it an Apple-only product. Mm -hmm. I agree. Like, maybe they buy Facebook? Because Facebook's kind of going out of business. There's also rumors of Mark Zuckerberg saying peace to Facebook next year. And he's saying, I didn't say that. And they're like, mm, maybe you did. Where's he going to go? <laughs> Dude, the guy's an Android. He'll probably go to Mars. I don't know. <laughs> he's going he's gonna to upload himself into 
the meta and he'll be He's, gone. You, this is the only place <laughs> you'll see him. Yeah. So I don't know. There's a lot, a lot of stuff going on. Um, you know, sometimes you got to take the news with a grain of salt because I think there's a lot of things that are very impactful that's unsaid in the media. And I know that sounds a little conspiracy theory, but there's a lot of money that we're talking about when we're talking about companies like Apple, Disney, Elon, Spotify, Twitter, like all that we're talking billions and billions of dollars that are going up against each other right now. Yeah. Like trillions of dollars are about to fight each other. That's literally what I'm going to say right now. And we're only going to hear a sliver of what happens because tr trillions of dollars can literally erase somebody. You would not know they existed yeah. for trillions of dollars. The whole lineage gone. Boom. Buzz TV. Buzz TV. <laughs> <laughs> Here's my rat. Oh, man. Well, hope everybody appreciated today's uh, <laughs> next level's rant. I, I, It's funny. I started the rant saying like, oh, yeah, we did this whole grind my gears because of next level. And you're like, I don't rant. And we finished the episode with uh, a next level. Rant. It's all facts, bro. I don't rant. I just give facts. I dish it like a buffet. I went to Mandarin level. this weekend. What's up? <laughs> Hold on. The next level. There. There's your rant. <laughs> well, um, with all that being said, hope everybody appreciated today's episode. <laughs> Some good shit. But um, yeah, always appreciate you guys coming. Hope you guys do leave us messages on some of this stuff. This what the hell was a pretty good one. Um, a lot of a lot of stuff out there. A lot of stuff out there. So always appreciate you guys when you guys come. Make sure you guys uh, stick around to the next episode. Um, next, what do you got before we go? Well, thank you guys for watching and listening to another episode of Beyond the Streams. Wherever you guys are watching or listening to us from, make sure you leave us a comment or a review so other people like yourself can find the content that you enjoy. Make sure that you also hit that like, that subscribe, and turn on that notification bell because you never know where the conversation is going to go and you never know who we might have on. Until next time, we'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.